Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. So in this video, I'm going to be giving you guys some study tips and talking about what helps me with my learning disability when it comes to studying and getting homework done. So let's get started. So if you haven't seen my previous video where I talk about my learning disability, I will link it down below so you guys can go check it out. But um, I, I explain everything in detail there and I actually do have my whole diagnosis. I kind of go through it a little bit in that video. Um, but basically, I have a learning disability in math, and I know I'm going to pronounce it wrong, but I believe it's dyscalcula. It's similar to being dyslexic, but it's only numbers. Um, so basically, what this means is that I have a really hard time, uh, like, memorizing formulas, things like that, when it comes to math. Um, I get really bad math test anxiety. Here's Maddox coming to join us. Um... So it makes math very, very difficult. Um, I don't have any issues with any other classes or any other, you know, subjects or anything like that. It's just strictly math. So it's taken me a lot to learn, you know, different study techniques, what works for math compared to, you know, what I do for my other classes because I've had to learn everything kind of all over again. Um, with my other classes, it doesn't really take a whole lot for me to learn the material. I absorb everything really, really easily, um, but math is just not the case. So um, I've gotten a little bit of, you know, techniques and kind of tricks up my sleeve that I've learned over the years. So I'm gonna be sharing that with you guys today. I apologize for Maddox's tail. Um, it's cold outside, so he's like just trying to snuggle up beside me. So the very first tip that I have is study at a time of day that is convenient for you when you feel comfortable. And I know that kind of goes without saying, but um, like I personally study best in the afternoon or at night. Um, I can't wake up in the morning and start trying to learn math because I get really overwhelmed if I have other stuff to do in the day, which most times I do. Um, so I find it really hard to sit down and concentrate if I know that I still have to go to the gym, you know, I still have other things to do. I have to clean the house, I have to wash clothes, whatever it is that I have going on that day. I can't focus if I know that I have all the other stuff that still has to get done. So for me, it's best to, you know, sit down and study, sit down and do my homework later in the afternoon or even like late at night. I'm a night person. So, you know, it's not uncommon for me to be sitting up doing homework at 10, 11, 12 o'clock at night. That is when I learn it best. So, you know, definitely stick to a time and try to get into a routine, um, you know, sticking to that time and working at it every single day. Then it becomes part of your routine and it won't really feel like a chore. It'll just feel like something that you're, you know, used to doing. And so with that, I guess my next tip would be um, study in a place that you feel comfortable studying at. Um, for me personally, part of my learning disability is that I get really distracted easily if there's too much going on. However, I also find it hard to concentrate if it's dead silent. So, you know, for me, I study best either in my living room or I have a second bedroom. Um, so I'll just go in there and I'll put the TV on, but I'll put the volume really, really low. Or if I'm on my computer looking at stuff, then I'll put like Pandora on in the background or like something on YouTube and just turn the volume down. So I have like some background noise, but it's not like overwhelming, you know, a whole bunch going on. Um, at school and the study lounges and all that, I find that there's often too many people and, you know, they're laughing, they're talking, they're on their cell phones, you know, they have study groups going on. So sometimes there's like five or six people talking at once. So that's a lot for me. Um, so as much as I would love to sit down and accomplish a whole lot in between classes, um, it doesn't always work out that way. So usually, like I said, I just reserve those times, you know, in the afternoon um, when I'm at home because I know that I can control the environment a little bit better. Okay, so the next tip that I have, um, this is one that I kind of picked up just over the years. Um, and I don't know if this will make sense to everyone, but it, it made sense to me. Um, so I study best if I'm doing math with loose leaf paper. I don't know why, but I like the ability to kind of take the paper out of my binder and work on it. Um, and then plus, you know, like I can kind of rearrange it however I need to, if I need to skip back and look at something from a previous chapter or, you know, skip ahead, I can kind of rearrange the papers. I feel like when you're working out of a traditional notebook, um, I just feel like, you know, once you run out of space on that page, you're like forced to go to the next page and then you can't really manipulate in between the pages. So I guess a good example of this would be um, like if I'm taking notes in class 
and then I go home and work on the homework. It's easier for me to be able to insert the homework pages right there with the notes that I took in class in my binder versus, you know, if we're taking notes in class, we might do like three sections in one day and then I get home and then I have to do the homework for all three sections and I can't go back and put the, you know, pieces of paper with each section of notes because, you know, now you're like several pages down in the notebook and it just gets really confusing for me and it feels really jumbled and disorganized. So um, working with loose leaf paper has definitely helped me a lot. Um, like I said, I don't know if that makes sense to anybody else. I hope I explained that pretty good. I probably didn't, but um, that's the best way that I can, I guess, make it make sense. So that's one thing that has helped me a lot. Um, another thing that has helped me a lot, um, and I know this is kind of like not eco-friendly, but I leave a lot of space on the paper and I clearly mark everything as I'm working. Um, you know, I would... Like in the past, I would put a whole bunch of stuff on one page and then I would go back to look at it and it would just look all jumbled and confusing, um, which is also part of my particular, you know, disability. I don't know if everyone that has this disability is the same way, but for me personally, if I get overwhelmed looking at all the numbers, then I don't understand any of it. Like I can't read it even though I'm the one who wrote it. So uh, the one thing that helps with that, like I said, is just leaving a ton of space. So I will clearly mark out, you know, the page number in the book, what problem we're working on. Obviously I'll write like the chapter, the section and all that. And then like, I'll skip a few lines and then I'll say like example number, you know, 5.9 or whatever. And then like, I'll skip another space and then start writing the problem. That way, when I go back in my notes and I say, oh, where was example 5.9, I can clearly see it and it's not just all you know right there on top of each other and then it kind of gets lost that way so i find that like i said leaving a lot of space really helps me um and i go through a lot of paper that way especially with you know the engineering classes some of our problems are quite lengthy so i go through a lot of paper but i mean it's what i have to do it's what works for me the best so i really can't feel too bad about that so the next study tip that i have and i don't know if this is really a study tip per se um, but more so like, I guess just helpful advice. Um, so when I first started taking the like upper level math classes, I had to buy a graphing calculator and the particular one I have, I don't know exactly what it's called. Forgive me. It's like a something 84. I don't know. Um, but I did not know how to use it. So I bought this calculator and I took it to class and you know, the teacher expects that you're going to know how to use it. And I did not. And it left me really, really, really confused. So I had to eventually just go home. I ended up looking up videos like tutorials on how to use it. And then it made sense. You know, you can have the calculator in front of you, but if you don't know how to use it, it's not going to be any use to you. So um, I would definitely say make sure you're very comfortable with the materials that you're using. Um, pr prior to that one, I just had a basic scientific calculator and I used that one for all of my like algebra classes and the basic classes. Um, and I felt very, very comfortable with that calculator. So I'll definitely say, you know, it's very important to be familiar with everything that you're using and know how to use it properly. Um, I was really, really surprised once I learned how to use my graphing calculator, the fact that <laughs> it does so much stuff and there's probably so many problems that I got wrong in the past that I would have gotten right had I known how to properly utilize the tools that were literally right in front of my face. So, um, yeah, definitely make sure you know how to use your calculator because that's, that's going to come in handy. So another tip that I have, and this is one that I personally do not do, um, just purely, I guess, out of my own laziness. I have nothing against this, but I just haven't gotten around to trying it yet. But I have heard um, for math disabilities that one thing that helps people a lot is writing out the steps of the problem with colored pencils. So like use, you know, one color for the first step of the problem, grab another color, do the next step, so on and so on. Um, and that also like going back to what I said about everything looking jumbled on the paper, that eliminates that and that kind of makes it so you can easily identify each step and you can go back through your notes and say, oh, here's this step, this was step one, you know, I used this color, whatever, it just makes it easier to read, easier to identify. So like I said, I personally don't do that just because when I'm in class, I'm trying to just get all the information on the paper as quickly as I can. Um, and I just, you know, pure laziness. I just haven't gotten around to trying it yet. But if that is something that you guys try or if it's something that you already do, let me know down in the comments because 
I am kind of interested to know like if that actually helps people. Um, I imagine that it would. I feel like it probably would be helpful for me in some, you know, situations. But like I said, being in the upper level math classes, it might get kind of difficult because you have many, many steps and problems. But if you're taking, you know, like basic algebra or like, you know, college algebra, I think it probably would be really beneficial. So let me know down in the comments if you guys, uh, what you know if you guys try that out okay so the very last tip that i have and this is one that is huge i use this all the time um watch videos if you're stuck on something look up a video on youtube look it up on khan academy there's a ton of other websites there's a ton of resources out there but i find a ton of videos on youtube to be extremely extremely helpful um you know especially when it comes to like calculus things like that um, I've used YouTube to look up statics videos because I got really, really <laughs> confused on some stuff in my statics class. But there's so many helpful videos out there for literally every topic, even physics, chemistry, I mean, literally anything. It doesn't even have to be math related, but surely you can find a video of someone explaining it. I guarantee that it's out there. So um, I do this literally almost every time that I'm doing my homework or studying, um, you know, even if I'm not necessarily stuck on a problem, even if I just want to kind of go back and have someone explain it over again, you know, I can go back and just pull up a video and that helps me tremendously. Um, I think I mentioned in my first video um, about tutoring. Tutoring does not help me. And I'm not saying that tutoring is bad or anything because it helps tons of people and that's great. But me personally, I have <laughs> failed in tutoring many, many times and it's just not a good method for me personally. And being able to watch videos online is so much more helpful because I can actually pause it, rewind it, you know, I can kind of manipulate it however I need to um, in a way that you can't do when you have someone right in front of you. And a lot of people prefer to have, you know, an actual tutor right there with them. And that's great. If that works for you, that is excellent. But me personally, you know, it's easier to have the video because sometimes, you know, I might hear what they're saying, but I might not take all the information in. So just being able to say, you know, hold on, rewind, let me listen to that again is so extremely helpful for me. And plus, you know, the majority of videos are obviously going to be showing you like on the board or on a piece of paper explanations. So I can, you know, have the ability to pause it and I can look at it and see like, okay, I see this step. I see how they got here. I see how they got to this number. Um, you know, I can take as much time as I need to be able to observe everything without feeling like I'm rushed or like I'm pressured. And that's how I feel when there's an actual tutor beside me. So, um, yeah, like I said, if you work with tutors, that's great, but I personally don't. So I feel like, you know, the videos are so helpful. Um, like I said, there's a ton of different websites out there. Um, Khan Academy is really, really great. And, you know, just a simple Google search will bring up so many resources. So definitely check that out. Don't be afraid to, you know, kind of dig around on Google, see what you can find because there are a lot of resources out there. Okay, so those are all my tips for this video. Um, I didn't really write anything down. I just kind of went off the top of my head with this one. But let me know down in the comments, you know, what you guys think, if I should do a part two, because there are like a lot more stuff that I can think of off the top of my head. Um, but I didn't want to make this video super, super long. So if you guys want a part two, let me know down in the comments. And if you guys enjoyed this video, please be sure to give it a like and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching. Bye, guys.